Hi, this is problem 6 from the 2018 AIM-1. Let n be the number of complex number z with the property such that length z is 1 and z to the 6 factorial minus z to the 5 factorial is a real number. Find the remainder when n is divided by 1,000. Okay, so we're dealing with complex numbers of length 1 and powers of that number. So it probably makes sense to look at these numbers on the complex plane. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So we have the imaginary axis, the real axis. And we have this number z. Let's just place it somewhere for convenience. So it has length 1. And it looks like we're going to have to use Demov's theorem here. So let's just specify that z has some angle theta. And we're trying to see what happens when we take z to the 120th power and z to the 720th power. So let's look at z to the 120th and just take theta, multiply it by 120. It'll wrap around the axis many times and it should end up perhaps over here. So that's z to the 120. And we're trying to look for the condition where when we take z to the 720 and subtract it from z to the 120, we'll end up with a real number. So equivalently, what that means is that the imaginary part of z to the 6 factorial has to match the imaginary part of z to the 5 factorial. So that means that z to the 720 could land in one of two possible locations. Uh, z to the 1 or the 720 could land right on top of z to the 120, or it could land over here. Either of these two cases will give matching imaginary parts such that this subtraction will give you a real number. Okay, let's call this situation one, let's call this situation two, and see if we can solve for what that means in terms of the angle theta. So for case one, we have that 720 theta, using Demov's theorem, minus 120 theta has to land you onto the real axis. So what that means is that the theta is going to be some multiple of 360. So we'll say 360 times some positive integer n. Okay, let's solve this out. That's 600 theta 360 n divide up by 120. We find that we have theta is equal to 3 fifths n for n equal to 0, say 1, 2, up to some point where these solutions will basically wrap around and start repeating. And that occurs when this value reaches 360 degrees. So we can solve for n. 360 times 5 over 3. That's 600. So these solutions go out to 600, at which point the solutions wrap around and repeat. So the total number of distinct solutions in theta is 600. Okay, now let's try to solve this for the second case. In the second case, we have that the angle for z to the 720 is 720 theta. And in this case, if we take the addition of the theta for z to the 120, we need to land on the negative real axis. So that'll be 180 degrees plus some even multiple or integer multiple of 360. Let's call that 360m. Okay, let's solve this and see what this uh, leads to. So 840 theta, 180 plus 360m. So divide by 70, 3 plus 6m. So we find that theta is 3 sevenths 
m plus 3 over 14. And again, this is for m is equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. And at some point, these solutions wrap around the circle and start repeating. And that occurs when this term is equal to 360. So that's 3 sevenths m. And we can solve for m to equal 840. So this sequence goes out to 840. The solution at 0 matches the solution at 840. So there are 840 distinct solutions in m. We can total up these to find out that the total number of solutions is 600 plus 840. That's 1440. Take the last three digits. Final answer, 440. Now we should check that the solutions that we find in case 1 do not overlap the solutions in case 2. Now you can make a geometric argument to convince yourself of that, but the algebraic argument is pretty straightforward. We can find the theta for situation 1 is 3 fifths n. The theta for situation 2 is 3 sevenths m plus 3 over 14. And the question is, can these ever be equal for n uh, zero or positive integers? We can divide up by 3, multiply by 70 to find out that 14n is equal to 10m plus 5. And then you quickly see that then, since this is an even number, this is an even number, this is an odd number, this can never happen. They can never overlap. So these two counting cases are non-overlapping, and we can add the total number of solutions from each of them to get the final count. Anyway, hope that helps, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.